hospital competition or renew the cooperation. A history scholar and a practitioner makes heads or tails of the complicated China-U.S. relations right after this week. I think America. Welcome back. You're still watching World Inside with me, Tianwei. The program is coming to you live on CGTN. Ties between China and the U.S. has had its ups and downs over the past decades. It's now become one of the cutthroat competition over trade and technology, some say. It's getting even more complicated as the Trump administration launched a year-long battle over tariffs. Is the U.S. indeed bent on taking China as a rival? Is the so-called Sussis trap? which refers to a rising power causing fear in an established power coming true. Earlier, I sat down with Ronnie Chan, chairman apparatus of Asia Society. He believes China doesn't intend to take part in any kinds of growing rivalry with any country, including the U.S. Take a look. How do you see the transformation that the U.S. has experienced over the past a decade or two that it has led to where it is today? Well, if America is as wise as the British, then perhaps we could uh, escape uh, that Thucydides trap. Uh, of course, this is the situation today between U.S. and China differs greatly from the U.S.-British relationship of 250 years ago. At that time, I think Britain decided that there's no way that in the long haul they can fight the United States with all the land and natural resources uh, and a rapid rise in the population mm. in the United States. So Britain basically gave up after they lost the, re the American Revolution War. Mm. So there's no Thucydides trap at that time. But today, America has made a decision that China is a threat and hence we have to fight it. Mm. Now, the question is, is that China's uh, intention to challenge mm. the United States? My personal answer is no. Mm. Uh, num uh, number two, uh, will China be able to challenge the United States? I also doubt. And so in the absence of intention, in the absence of ability, I think America is perhaps overestimating China. Mm. Why would you say China does not have the intention to challenge the United States? And why would you say it does not have the capabilities yet to challenge the United States? The two strong points you just mentioned. Well, first of all, you look at China's history. China has always been a big country just by virtue of its size, population, land mass. Yes. Uh, it's going to be very important. But China has never really um, go out of its way to dominate everybody. Um, when Zheng He went south uh, on the boat in 1401, 1403, or 1405, didn't take an inch of land. But is the China then the same with China today? You don't change human nature. The Chinese nature for the last 4,000 years has been so. And so I think that uh, a lot of uh, Westerners who use their own thinking, it was the West that colonized Asia and Africa and the Middle East. Coming from Hong Kong, I know it very well. Under the Brits, 150 years. So the West is, it's really ironic that the West took people's land and now they're afraid that other people will do the same to him. Mm -hmm. And yet, forgetting that, you look at, look at history. History does not uh, support the point that China is going to uh, take land from any people. Mm. Uh, then, of course, you know, you have some ignorant people that talk about, what about Taiwan? Taiwan has always been part of China. Uh, people talk about you know, Tibet. Well, Tibet is really where the, the great game was played out in the 19th century. Right. And, and, and it has strategic in, importance. So anyway, so, so for all those reasons, uh, I think that uh, intention-wise, uh, America should work with China. What about capability-wise? Capability-wise, I think that whereas China has improved a lot in the last couple of decades. But take, for example, the university education. Uh, academic rigor is still very, very weak in China. Uh, so they are able to do something when they focus very much on a particular field, uh, maybe quantum physics or 
uh, 5G or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the overall uh, capability of China, uh, sci uh, scientifically speaking, is still way behind that of the United States. So why is the U.S., do you think, is looking at the things, you know, on a very general basis and think about China as a rival? Does the U.S. necessarily need a rival in order to be able to sharpen its own capabilities? I think there is no doubt some ideological <coughs> a dimension to it. Mm. Um, they just always, especially after the fall of the Berlin Wall, they have won. They have defeated Soviet Union. And so the triumphalism is tr tremendous. Uh, and yet they cannot accept that another system that is not quite the same as mm. theirs uh, should rise and become uh, so influential in the right. world. Uh, and so I think that the West has to learn to accept that there are other systems other people with different history, different background, different civilization, different culture, yeah. uh, and you have to accept them. If right. you don't, you're going to have a problem. At a recent conference, you said that the West, the quote unquote, should accept the fact that there is a rising Asia. It, it might be a very hard fact to be accepted. So what can the other side, for example, Asia, China included, do? Well, let me turn the question around. What okay. can America do first? America can work with Asia, can work with China. But what if they didn't want to? Well, then too bad. China has no choice. You are forcing China to take its own course. Uh, do you have any influence uh, on China when that is the case? For example, uh, when China wanted to develop its uh, space program, I was told they, they went to NASA, and NASA said, go home. So today, China has to develop their own system. They now have a GPS system called Beidou. Right. So does America have any influence on it? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. Uh, if they had said yes to the Chinese when they approached the NASA, as I was told, it, that w will make them friends and America wish to have some influence. Take another example, the lavitational train. Mm -hmm. I was told that uh, Germany would not sell critical technology to China. So what can China do? Nothing except develop their own. So in f uh, and now uh, China has that technology. Uh, I think that uh, what is happening today is forcing China to develop even faster. Now, is that what the West want to see? I assume not. And so I think they are actually doing something that is to hurting themselves mm. as it is hurting China. Chinese Americans have been playing an active, constructive role in pushing for better understanding between China and the U.S. Uh, Mr. Ronnie Chen, one of the leading Chinese Americans, has been devoted to nurturing bilateral ties between the two countries over decades. He told me about the great importance of people-to-people -people exchanges and what challenges Chinese Americans are facing right now in the U.S. What about the Chinese Americans these days, particularly the talents in business, science and technology, in the arts and culture? Can they still be an equal partner in the United States as they are already part of it anyway? Well, this is uh, very sad. I think uh, McCarthyism is uh, beginning to rear its ugly head. And you think it is McCarthyism already? Well, I said it is beginning to rear its ugly head. Uh, when your last name is happen to be Chan, Wong, or whatever, mm. uh, then automatically you are a bad guy. I think that goes against the principle of the establishment of the United States. And it is not that we haven't seen it before. We have seen it before in the 1950s, yes. uh, under a different circumstance, of course. And, and it is very sad that it, sh it should get to that point. Uh, eventually, I think America will come back. Uh, they will wake up, uh, and there are organizations such as Com a Committee of 100, of which I'm a member, mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, that is speaking up. Uh, but it will be a, a tough battle. It will be an uphill battle. But the question really is, we've been told over the decades by the U.S. side that this is a free land and everybody will have its place. Now, are we seeing the realities that all of those promises, in a way, not having its capabilities of being translated into realities anymore, at critical times particularly. 
Put it this way, no one is perfect. China is not perfect, neither is America. Mm -hmm. The difference is America thinks that she is perfect. And that's a sad thing. No one is perfect. And uh, not, in, not even the United States. Mm -hmm. I think there are many good things in America, but to think that ourselves are perfect is a foolish position to take. I think uh, America will sooner or later wake up and uh, everything goes in cycles. Uh, they will wake up to their own foolishness. Uh, China have to change as well. Mm -hmm. And so when both changes, hopefully one day relationship may become better. I remember right before the PRC was founded in the United States after the World War II and the civil war in China, there was a debate about, quote unquote, who lost to China. Now, is this another, quote unquote, time for the U.S. to lose a very different China? But as same crucial, if not more. Remember a gentleman by the name of Sidney Rettenberg, the one who wrote the book, yes. The Man Left Behind or something like that. He personally told me that Mao Zedong and Zhou Enlai wanted to build good relationship in 1946 with the United States. The United States had no deal. And so uh, America turned against uh, the coming PRC. Uh, as a result, history has taken its course. Yes. That took uh, 20, 30 years to change until Nixon visited China. And I think that we may be moving in the same direction where the United States is making another mistake. And, you know, you, it, it takes two to tangle. And, you know, no matter how much the Chinese want to work with the United States, if the United States doesn't want to work with it, no deal. And that's a sad thing of the world today. And the most sad thing is that it is unnecessary. It can be prevented, but it is not being prevented because, in my opinion, basically the foolishness of the diplomacy in the United States. I know you work very hard behind the scenes, so what can many others, together with you, be able to push as much as possible so that nobody is losing China or losing the United States? It is still something that I think we should do, and that is person-to-person -person relationship. Uh, those relationships cannot be uh, easily broken. Uh, the, the head of a top think tank in the United States, uh, I saved his life personally in Hong Kong while swimming. And so, you know, these are relationships that go back 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they trust me, I trust them. And I, so I think that those kind of relationships, although it will not be accepted on the surface of the society, mm -hmm. underneath, is still something that can keep the dialogue going, which hopefully will prevent it from mm -hmm. getting worse and perhaps even one day uh, turn the situation to the better. Ronnie Chan, it's always a pleasure talking to you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you.